more friends you have, the more capability you have of translating your ideas into their reality and getting rich. Because the more people you find who have needs and the more you have to fill them, the more they spread word about your activities to other people. They do marketing for you. So, once you identify your intellectual capital and translate into social capital, then you start to engage in financial capital. You start to make money. How do you do this? Well, there are three ways to, to uh, generate financial capital. Uh, one is just through, own, through your own labor. By your own physical efforts. So you provide a service, for instance. You get paid by the hour, maybe. Or you get paid by the day, or you get paid by the project. Uh, or you can um, work for someone else. So by providing a service, you're self-employed. By working for someone else, you are employed by others. But either way, you are making money with what you are able to do best. I'm trying to teach you, ultimately, that your goal is working for yourself, but with other people. So you might, indeed, go work for someone else first. But what you're trying to do is not just make money, but learn a skill. So go to someone, you know, go to the boss of the company, go to a manager, and what you're trying to learn from them is what are their gifts. What can they pass on to you that you can then use to start your own organization after you leave the company? So, this is what you're doing. You are identifying your gift, connecting your gift with other friends, and then learning their gifts. So you are engaging in a learning process. You teach them, they teach you. And this way you share skills and you build a repertoire of skills that you can use to start a business. So, once you have done the small stuff by providing a service for a fee or providing a product for a fee, you start to enlarge it to a franchise, what we call a firm. Now that means you have to accept the legality of the firm. You can start with sole proprietor businesses. And that means you go to the IRS, get a tax code, and you are then able to write off your activity as business expenses. And that will save you the time and the money of um, frivolous work. You know, you can get to focus specifically on what is a business business expense versus an entertainment expense. So you end up dividing your life into different areas. And if you have lunch with a friend, that's entertainment. That's networking. If you have a business lunch, you can write that off. So what you have to do is you have to translate your disciplined mind in, into disciplined activity. And that means if you have 24 hours in every single day, or seven days in every single week, you have to break every single hour into a very productive Every hour of your life should be spent implementing your reality. If you sleep, everyone needs sleep, but you should have a schedule that allows you to make the most out of your sleeping time and then make the most out of your waking time. And this is why if you look at very wealthy people, once you get to a certain level of wealth, you are scheduling an immense number of activities into a very short amount of time. So, as most of you know, if you want to see, say, a professor, you go to their office hours. That's their way of scheduling you into their activity. You should learn to do the same thing. But, and here's the key point, none of this works if you don't have discipline, or what we also say, organizational skills. You have to be very organized. You have to know how to keep commitments. You have to know that if you agree to meet someone at a certain place at a certain time, you better be there. You have to know that if someone asks you to do something and you, you, you agree to it, you better do it. This is what we call integrity, keeping your word. When you keep your word, people trust you. And part of social capital, especially under the Putnam model, is trust, built on social networks. If people trust you, they give you more business. They refer more of their friends to you as a reliable person. That's why you build wealth. Now, here's where we get into the specifics of how to get rich. There are two types of income. There is what we call cash flow, income that you get on a bi-weekly or monthly basis. And what you're trying to do with that cash flow, you're trying to lower the amount of hours you spend generating it, but increase the number of money you get. So we recognize this by the term 
uh, dollars per hour. So you are, you want to go from say five dollars per hour to five dollars per second. You're trying to minimize the number of hours you work so that you have the rest of the time left over for generating ideas and networking with people. The actual physical labor involved in creating your service or your product should be very small. So here we go by what we call the 20-80 rule. 20% of your time creates 80% of your product. This is a rule discovered um, by an economist whose name is Casey right now, um, an Italian economist, who noticed that in Italy, 20% of the landowners own 80% of the land. You can extend this to any phenomenon. 20% of your customers will generate 80% of the wealth. 20% of your friends will refer 80% of your customers. So you can break this down into rather precise mathematics. How much time are you spending in actual productive work and how much money do you get per hour for that productive work? Now, you can do that for free, of course. And that's what we call advertising. You go and you give a speech for free, you go and you give a product away for free, you're advertising your organization for the kind of service you provide. But what you're trying to do is get beyond advertising to a long-term commitment. So this is what I mean by social capital. You get to a very systematic pattern where people are coming to you every single week, every single month, and they're giving you money for your service. So you're generating cash flow, positive cash flow. Now, every business model has positive cash flow income at the bottom and the expenses at the top. So overhead and income. And then the bottom line is your subtraction of income from overhead. So if you are spending more money than you're taking in, you're in debt. If you are taking in more money than you spend, then you get rich. Very simple. So what you're trying to do is minimize the number of hours you work and maximize the number of dollars you get out of those hours. So that's cash flow. There's negative cash flow, there's positive cash flow. Once you have money coming in, it's pretty easy to make money in this economy. You have to build wealth. So this is where I get into the sort of basics of what we call happiness or contentment. You have to make sure that the money you're spending out, the money you're paying out after you get it in, goes only to your productive endeavors. Now, most people, whenever they spend money, they are providing for the basic necessities, you know, providing for rent, clothing, food, entertainment. So I'm suggesting one, to cut out entertainment. If you cut out entertainment, you know, if you stop buying sodas, for instance, if you stop buying junk food, if you stop taking in food that hurts your health, then you save money that way. So the first thing you have to do to step out of the culture is to stop doing the things that most Americans do. So you save money by spending money only on those things that provide the highest nutrient value. So instead of drinking soda, drink soy milk. It has a higher nutritional value. You may spend more at first for the soy milk, but you spend more over time for the sodas. So you want to maximize the kind of impact you get in the nutrients you, you absorb. And you'll find that if you eat things like sushi, you're spending more for sushi at a given meal, but that meal lasts you the entire day. Instead of going to McDonald's three times a day and spending, this, spending more money at McDonald's because you're going more frequently, but that's because you're hungry. So shift from fast food to nutritious food. And what you find is that the rich have learned that already. They've gone from fast food to organic food. So once you have done that, you're starting to save money. And then you use the money you've saved and you invest in financial capital. Now this is where we go from cash flow to building wealth. There are many different tools out there to build wealth. One is, as you may have already heard, a high-yield savings bank. So you can go to 
Citibank, you can go to Washington Mutual, go to Chase, and look at the savings account. You want to find an account that gives you at least a 5% rate of return on a yearly basis. Accounts that guarantee this are called Certificates of Deposit, or CDs. So you want to go to a bank and find out what the lowest amount is you can invest in a CD, because what you want to do is take, say, $500, put into a CD, and the ratio is the longer you put it in, the higher the interest.